Welcome everybody to the Build a Button Basics tutorial where we are going to show you all of the basic functions and features of the Build a Button Online Design Center. To start, you want to choose a template and we have a number of different preset templates for you, round, rectangle, square, oval, pretty much any different shape of button that you could use. So we'll go with a round and when you click on it, you'll see a number of different sizes that pop up. And so we will go with the three and a half inch button. For the purposes of our demonstration, you'll obviously want to design to the size of button that you're going to be printing. And make sure that you understand this red line here, this is the print area. So anything that you want actually visible on your button, make sure that it goes within this red area right here. Okay, so now that we've chosen our template, let's say we want to add some text. Well, again, over here in your left-hand navigation bar, click on text. And this will bring up the only option that there is, which is add text. And then just follow the directions on the screen, which is click to edit. And so let's edit, let's add some text here real quick. And to start out, we'll just go real simple and we're gonna put a letter because I wanna show you something interesting about sizing. As we know that a lot of people like to just do single letters or initials and they want them to span the entire width of the button. Well, when you wanna change the size of your text, first make sure that your formatting tab is up. And then if you go over here, this right here is where you wanna change the size of your text. So as you go up and as you go down, you'll see the text increase and decrease in size. If you hold on to this, it'll go up very rapidly and it'll go all the way to 127. That's as big as the text can get using that feature. But you're not out of luck if you want that letter to span the entire button. You can actually use this section right here for the text and you can change the increment in size that you're increasing by, which I'll show you again later when we talk about photos. But if we go up by three increments and then hit our plus button, as you can see, the text gets huge. And so that will actually allow it to take up the entire space of the button. And you can also rotate it too. And you can do this with, with text at any time. As you, inc as you increase the number or decrease the number, you can rotate the text. So if you want the A to be slanted, or and you can do this obviously with, with words and with longer sentences, anything that you want to do, you can rotate that text. And then if you want to quickly get it back to, to the center, um, you can click that C button. That won't change the rotation though. You just need to put that back um, to zero. Okay, now let's actually do this with more text. I think it'll make a little bit more sense. So let's add here American button machines because most people when they do text, they're going to have an, uh, you know two, three, four words, something of that nature. Um, so let's look at this real quick. Now, just the standard features. If you want to bold your text, if you want to italicize it, if you want to underline it, you can do all of those different things, of course. Um, you can also change the type of font. Um, as you can see here, Arial is the standard, but there are a number of different fonts as I scroll down even including wingdings. You know, wingdings is a fun font, you know, where an A is a P sign and a B is, is you know, this, the kind of A-OK -okay sign. So just a number of cool, you know, different little fun uh, graphics that you can use there with wingdings. Um, but we will go with Arial just because it is standard. And you can also change the color. So if you want to change the color of your font, um, just click here. It'll bring up the color picker. And we have a number of default swatches that you can use. You can even pick a custom color in here um, just by, you know, dragging around and choosing what color you want. We'll go with red for purposes of our demonstration today. Um, so we click OK there. Now, say that you want an outline. You know, a lot of people like to have their text outlined. Well, same thing. Right over here where it says text outline, you can click on this button, and we'll add a blue outline to it. And you can see that it's kind of faint right off the bat. But if you want to increase the size of that outline, once again, you just hit this plus button, and it'll increase the size of that outline. As you can see now, the blue comes up. Um, much more. And again, you can rotate that text, you can move it around, you can do a lot of different things. Now let's say that you've moved it around, but you want it, you don't want it to be up here high, you want it to be back in the center, that's where you can click the C button and it'll go right back to the center for you, um, which is obviously very nice and, and very convenient and easy. Now, a couple of features I have not shown you yet. If you want to go back and edit your text, right, as I just did, double click the box, and it'll bring up the edit text box again. So you can change the font if you want to. And you can also add some of these interesting features where you can curve the text up or curve the text down. You can curve the text up if you want it to kind of go along the border of the button like that. And you can also put it in a circle. So you can see not a huge shift there and change when I went to circle. But here's what's cool about uh, the circle feature is that you can actually increase the spacing between the letters. And what's neat is that then if you hold down on it again, it'll go a lot more rapidly, but you can actually make that text span the entire circumference here of the button, which is just kind of a cool and neat little design, and we'll keep it that way just for fun. Okay, so that's the, the complete the circle feature. Now, let's say that you want to add a photo. Again, we go over here to our left-hand navigation, and we'll click on photo. And again, just one option, you're going to upload a photo, 
And this looks just like many other photo upload um, sequences that you've seen before. So we're just going to add this American flag. And let's open, and we will upload it. And as you can see now, we have our American flag picture. What's the big problem here is that obviously the, the image itself is outside that red print area. So we need to make this image smaller. So how do we do that? If we are in our Images and Shapes tab, again, you will see this familiar rotation and size feature. Okay, so we have our size increment at, at uh, three. If our size increment is at only one, again, as we go smaller, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't reduce the size as much. If we put it back to three, it reduces the size a lot more, um, you know, up or down. So if we want to increase it, let's say that we just want it to be right here in the middle. So again, you can drag it. Um, you can move it around. If you want it back to the center, you can just hit center. It'll go back. So the same thing there is the text. Um, and you can also rotate it if you want to. Um, we'll keep it right here in the center um, just because it's going to look better that way for the button that we are attempting to design. So let's keep that there. You can also add shape. So let's say that you know we have our American button machines, we have our flag. Let's say that we want to add a couple of stars. We'll go over here to shapes, and there are a number of preset shapes, arrows, hearts. We're going to add a star. So we put our star in there, and keep in mind here that whatever image or text is in the box, is outlined in the box, is the one that when you drag is the one that's going to move. So right now, because we this star is the layer that's on top, that's what we're clicking on, and that's why the box is here. Well, if we can actually send that to the back, now we click on the star. As you can see, the star is now the one that's outlined, so we can move it without moving the flag. So let's move our star over here, and it's a little bit big. So again, if you want to change the size, it's the same thing that you would do with the photo. Go right over here, and we don't want to change this as much, or we don't want this the size increase to be as big. So we'll go down to the single increment, and let's move this star right over here where it's got space. And if we want to change the color, we go over here to fill, and let's make these stars blue. So we click blue on our star. And so now we've got this star the size that we want it. We've got it the color that we want it. If we wanted to put another one over here, it could be a little bit cumbersome to actually have to go recreate the star. Great thing is you don't even have to. Once you have the star highlighted, go over here to copy and then paste it, and voila, you've got another star right there for you, which is kind of neat. So if we drag our other star right over here, now we've got our two stars, we've got our flag, and again, if we bring this to the front, now you can see that the flag is actually overlapping the stars again. And this is where you want to be very clear with your layers, and that's where the send to back and send to front. So if you click on something and things get a little bit out of order, not how you want them, just make sure that you click on one of the layers and then either send it to back or send it to the front, whichever is going to make it look like you want it to. Um, and that way your button will look exactly as you want it to look. And you can also delete very easily. So let's say that you don't want this star anymore. Just make sure that it is highlighted. Again, make sure it's the one in the box. Go up and hit the delete button, and it'll be gone. But we do want the star, so let's copy, let's paste it, let's add it right back. Put it right over here on our design. And as you can see, and then let's send this back to the back. As you can see, it's that easy to just create a very easy design with shapes, stars, and text that looks exactly as you want it to look. And once you have it exactly as you want it to look, go up to File and Save, and this is where you can save to print for use with your button machine later on. So hit Save to Print, and that will bring up these two options. So you have your punch cutter, circle cutter option, or your die cutting press. If you choose this first option, you can then select the number of, of designs that you want on a page. So with a three and a half inch button, two is the maximum. So if you want two on a page or if you just want to do one, you could do that too. But we'll put the two on there. And as you click OK, then you can save it as a JPEG or a PDF. Choose whichever one you want. And at this point now, the Build a Button Online Design Center is communicating with our high speed servers. And it can sometimes take between 20 seconds to a minute um, to save your design because we do save these as high resolution files so that they look good when you print. Um, and the save time can just be determined by um, the speed of your connection, different factors like that. But it shouldn't take longer than a minute. And as you see, it pops up. Press OK to save. It'll bring up this window that you're all familiar with. And you can actually change the file name if you want to. So we'll just call this ABM button. And then we will hit save. That will save wherever you tell it to. I've told it to save to my desktop. And so we'll click to open it. And as you can see right here, you have a page that is ready to print with two different designs on there, ready to be put on buttons with your button machine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all of the basics of the Build a Button Online Design Center that you need 
to make a fun, interesting, awesome button.